spring continues to have sprung with the Iowa Western football team. Position battles are in good position. The pitcher, an important position. A tale of two pitchers and two games. Rivalry game at City Park. One team dominates, the other wins. The Falcons and Vikings getting their kicks in St. Albert territory. The Lady Lynx looking to stay unbeaten. A battle of the A-teams. Hey, this just in, AL looking for a new football coach. My name's Maddie Kinney from AL and at Bluff Sports Zone starts now. Hello, I'm JJ Davis and welcome to the latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone. Now spring football is well underway at Iowa Western. And from what some of the coaches have been telling me, when it's all said and done, the Reavers could be loaded. And the former Titan could be a key weapon. For more, here's IDUB TV student Austin Heinen. Spring football in full swing, questions rise, Positions open. It's a time to stand out from the rest. Alex Reed, one of last year's main receivers, already has risen to the challenge. I've had a year under my belt, so I know what I'm doing, or I should at least. Um, so I'm helping out the newer guys, helping them run their routes, helping them uh, do their responsibilities. This spring has been a big step forward, I think, for all of us. We have a lot of returning receivers, with the exception of Bryant and Gmo and Spence, but uh, we're a lot more experienced, and that's making practice go a little bit better. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. I'm um, representing my hometown in front of my home fans, my family, uh, my friends, and all the people in the community. It's awesome. It's an awesome experience, and I'm very grateful for it. The upcoming sophomore seeks not just to improve as a playmaker, but also as a role player. Being a better leader. Um, I think last year, I kind of let that slip a little bit, but uh, this year I plan on being a leader, holding up the concept of routes um, as, a receiving, as a receiving group out there. Uh, that's imperative to our success, so I just got to make sure that everybody does their job. But receiver isn't the only wide open position that Alex is familiar with. As Akees Teague and Antoine Gilbert move on, the running back position is more than open as well. Um, my whole life I've been switching positions and hopefully now that I'm at the college level I can just stay at receiver but if they do ask me to move back to running back I'd gladly gladly learn how to play it again. Quarterback position also looking for a placement. Tay Bender and Reed already well acquainted. Um, Tay's doing a really good job being a leader out there and uh, me working with the second group last year, a second group on offense. Tay and I have pretty good chemistry on and off the field and we're just working to make each other better. Speaking of acquaintances, how often do you see Coach Duggan about your work on the field? Well, with Coach Duggan, um, I see him out there every morning when we go out there for spring practice. And whenever he has time, he tries to pick my brain about uh, offensive schemes or rules that we have as receivers or as an offense. Uh, and they're always picking my brain. And I'm more than willing to share my knowledge of this game with them. Iowa Western plays their spring game on Reed's old stomping ground under the Friday night lights in May. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Austin Heinen. Thanks, Austin. So, it's almost here. Uh, the spring football game, that is. You want to get your last football fix before the fall? Then check it out. The blue and white game is just a first down or so away, so mark it down. Friday night, May 2nd, 6 o'clock at Lewis Central. The Iowa Western coaches get their final look before summer kicks in and a new crop of talent shows up in August. The Reaver Spring Game, the first Friday in May at LC. Be there. They were all there for the big city soccer game. The Lynx run around with the Titans, but next up, the Raiders invade Iowa Western when we come back.
At Council Bluff Savings Bank, our goal is to help you, your families, and your businesses grow and prosper for generations. We take pride in our community, whether it's volunteering our time or helping individuals, families, and businesses succeed. We provide you with the personal service and attention you deserve. With over 220 years of banking experience, decisions are made locally. We are Council Bluffs people operating at Council Bluffs Bank to help Council Bluffs be a better place to work and live. Council Bluffs Savings Bank, hometown banking, the way it used to be. Member FDIC. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, and make a difference in the life of a child, for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone, brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family-owned funeral home, serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. Last we checked, the Reavers softball team 8-0 at home, but then comes Highland. The Scotty scotted, I mean spotted, Iowa Western four runs in the first inning. The visitors then score five in the third and win it 8-6. Highland takes game two 5-2 to complete the sweep. Ouch! Next up, Next day for the Reavers, Central CC. Aubrey Vogueril continues her dominance. The sophomore strikes out 10 in just five innings. Now the home team's up, four to zip in the fourth. Michelle Trulin lays it down. Her third hit of the game later. Two on, gets by, Trulin races in, five nothing Reavers. Morgan Hoig, her second hit, knocks in her third run, six to zip, yes, Everybody hits. Amanda Whiteman doubles to the gap. Iowa Western 12 hits overall, five alone here in the fourth to grab a commanding 8-0 lead. Now for a closer look. Boberil throws a one-hitter. The sophomore wins her team-leading 11th game of the year. Great catch. This one, all Reavers, eight to zip. <laughs> Iowa Western ready to rock for game two. And in the circle, Rachel Hanks, the freshman starting her ninth game looking for her eighth win. Strikes out the first two Raiders she faces. Seven for the game. Central starter Caitlin Bank matching K for K. The game features just one hit through five innings. The visitors Kirsten Goff a solid shot in the second. Nothing to yawn about in the third. The Reavers get a runner in scoring position. Michelle Trulin reaches on an error, steals second, two on, two out. Morgan Hoig strikes out to end the threat. Now Hanks gives up a two-out triple in the sixth and is pulled. New pitcher Ashley Schmidt hits the pitcher bank. Moments later, second and third, the designated player, Kirsten Goff, two Raiders come in. Central goes up, two to zip. That's all Caitlin Bank needs. 
three outs away from a no-hitter and gets the other Caitlin Buchholz to ground out to second. Then Jocelyn Hernandez as Bank strikes out 11 overall. Last hope, Chelsea King fouls off nine straight pitches and the 10th. Central two, and Iowa Western zero. She threw a no-hitter. She's, she's good. Um, she threw us off balance. We didn't do what we were supposed to do. And, you know, that's what happens. We're playing with zero passion right now. Your head coach is frustrated with the team's lack of passion. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Sometimes we come out strong, and then it kind of fades away. I think we all have passion. It's just a matter of finding it. And like she says, if we, if we don't have it, then... Like, we got to find it somewhere. Off the field, we're very, like, loosey-goosey funny. But then we kind of get on the field, and I think we get a little uptight and not as loosey-goosey as we should be, or as relaxed as we do. That's the million-dollar question. How do you ignite that passion? <laughs> if someone knows, let me know. I don't know. I mean, we've been going over it all year. I, ha I don't know. I think if you don't have the passion, it's something you can't teach. Iowa Western drops its third game in two days. Veteran head coach and proven winner Lana Ross, not a happy camper. But you know, passion is a big word in my book as well. I mean, you don't play with passion? You figure it out. The Reavers then hit the road. First stop, Muscatine. Ashley Schmidt, eight strikeouts in game one. Aubrey Voberil, 10 Ks in the second. And Iowa Western sweeps four to one and five to zip. Southeastern then outscores the Reavers the next day, 9-7. But Lana Ross and company come back to take round two, five to two. So Iowa Western wins three of four conference games and is now seven and one in the league. The 18th ranked baseball team hit the highway as well. Iowa Western just destroys Muscatine. The Reavers win all four. Mark Raritan's club scores 55 runs as the Reavers run their record to 31 and eight. The high school girls soccer season is underway. The Lynx getting their kicks early, but up next, two schools who know each other very, very well. For more than a quarter century, thousands of athletes have relied on this team, Jenny Ed Sportsmen. Their sole focus is to prevent, diagnose, and treat your sports injury, getting you back in the action. Jenny Ed Sportsmen partners with Neb Ortho, giving you consistent one-on-one -on -one care from diagnosis to rehab. And since every injury an athlete is different, they've even developed a sports injury clinic specifically designed for athletes. Jenny Ed Sportsmen. I'm one on Monkey Guide. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning is 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash, 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy. Oh, and she even talks to it. Who's she talking to? Her mom? 
She talks to her mom a lot. This turned out to be a very physical high school boys soccer game, but then again, anyone surprised? I mean, after all, it's AL and LC we're talking about. Now, not much is expected from either team this season for the simple fact that they're young. The Lynx lost six seniors from a team that won six and 11 a year ago. The Titans lost 15 or so from a club that won eight and eight. And to top it all off, both have new coaches. They kick off with Lewis Central having beaten Abraham Lincoln the last 10 times. The Lynx dominate. Opening minutes with the cross. Peyton Shinost hits the post. AL keeps up the pressure. The home team 11 corner kicks to the Titans one. Raymond Duncan sends it back in. Hits the crossbar. The Lynx six shots on goal in the first half to LC's two. But the visitors lead one zip at the break thanks to a deflection and goal by Nate Sir. Abraham Lincoln outshoots Lewis Central 29 to 9. Shinost again. Oh. And it's wide right. Just under 27 minutes to go. The Titans' Tony Rue is loose with the right foot. The senior, his only shot, makes it count 2 0 LC. The Titans' keeper, Bailey Walker, comes up big time and time again. The freshman, 11 saves, Lewis Central. Bats away the Lynx, two to zip. We completely rode our luck tonight, I think, for a little bit, but you know, I think we make our own luck too. You know, we played really, really hard. I think defensively, our effort was fantastic. We had too many chances, we shot 20 times, but sometimes it's a matter of luck. You haven't played since the seventh grade. What's this all about? Uh, I thought I'd come out and give it a shot. Miss football due to injury, so I wanted to get as many sports as I could in my senior year, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I just told myself before the game I had to make up for the Atlantic game. That was a bad game. I gave up five goals. I said, I got to do something for the team. Getting a first shutout felt good. It means a lot because uh, I've uh, grown up with a lot of freshmen in my soccer team, so having our first high school win was really a lot. How frustrating was it to hit the crossbar multiple times, come close, and not finish? Very. It was pretty frustrating. We're passing and we're talking a lot more. It's not like four people for a team like last year was. We're doing way better than last year. You know, as a football player, football at AL, we hate LC. We hate it. It's a huge rivalry. So that carries over for soccer with me. So I, I just can't stand losing to LC. Good game, guys. We have a very young team. We only have two seniors in the whole team. And we have a lot of juniors that they are not able to play. So, you know, we are building the team. So we need some time. Very, very nice job. I'm so proud of you guys right now. That's I think we ride, we ride this momentum. You know, replacing 15 seniors is tough, but there's a bright future at this school. And I tell these boys every day, improve every single game. Another typical knockdown drag out between two city rivals. AL may have won the battle, but LC wins the war. One, two, three, dance! And then there's St. Albert. Now the Falcons didn't make it to state last year for the first time in five years. So you just know this is a bunch of angry birds ready to fly. Here's IDUB TV student Michael Byland. This is the Falcons' fifth match in five days. St. Albert looking for win number three in its home opener against AHST. Right away, the Falcons getting good looks. Sam Sneed comes up short. Sneed this time to Taylor Patton. That one's just off the mark. With the first half coming to a close, Patton with a nice feed to Rodrigo Berejas. The freshman with the first score coming in the 38th minute. Fans just trying to stay warm on this cold, windy evening. Second half, AHST's Preslin Groby with one of the Vikings' nine shots on goal. Mason Good with the place kick. Groby right there to clean it up. The visitors tie it at one. 
back the other way. Barajas answers with his second goal, fourth on the year. And with Sneed's goal here, the Falcons pull this one out as they beat AHST three to one. Today was a little rough. I think five games in five days kind of made us a little bit tired. Uh, we were dragging a little bit, playing late last night. We didn't get home until 12.30. I think that affected the boys a little bit. Uh, first home game maybe played into that, but we were a little slow, but we'll get better. It's really tiring. We're, we're, all of us have got bruises everywhere. Our legs are shot, so it's pretty rough. Got to get some rest the next couple days. I play my best to my best ability every game. I got to leave it out there on the field every game. Can't let my team down. On three, one, two, three, Falcons! Obviously for this team, get to state is always a goal. Uh, I think the theme, the theme for this team has been bring home the hardware. So that's, that's our goal for the season is to come home with something more than just uh, participation. St. Albert would lose to Dennis and Schleswig on Friday, two to one. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Michael Byland. Thanks, Michael. Now, St. Albert's out to prove that last season was a fluke. The Falcons even up at 3-3. Three three. TJ's 4-1. Thomas Jefferson kicks off the season 3-0, then loses at the Urbandale invite to the host school, but the Jackets come back to outget Ankeny 2-1. Hey, the Lynx struggling 0-5. Abraham Lincoln and its first-year coach has scored just one goal. Lewis Central and its new leader, 2 and 3. Up next, our play of the week. Take your pick on the other side. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Jack Frost, you do have beautiful teeth. My, my what? Are they really as white as they say? Yes. <gasps> oh, they really do sparkle like freshly fallen snow. This is an excellent example of what teeth should look like. Check out the iridescence of that incisor. The beauty of that bicuspid. The magnificence of those molars. <laughs> and the best way to achieve such terrific teeth is brushing. Two minutes, twice a day. Not 30 seconds, not a minute, 45. Two minutes. That's all it takes. They're beautiful. Schedule your campus visit today. Iowa Western, the world is waiting. Did you know that three of the four area girls high school soccer teams are ranked? All but the Lynx, but don't tell AL. You know, Abraham Lincoln hasn't been to state since 2002, and it's gonna be a little bit rougher for Andy Ruff and company as the Lynx move up to class 3A this season. 3A, shmee you still got to play the games. Here's IW TV student Logan Corkins. Winless Atlantic taking on the Lynx. First home game of the year for Abraham Lincoln. First half, Delaney Bolton. 
can't get the cross pass to work. The Lynx offense struggles early. Mackenzie O'Brien on the corner kick. She can't make it work either. AL with 52 shots in this one. 17.45 to play. Bolton on the outside. A nice misdirection with the feet, and she will score. Not even 30 seconds later, though. The give and go between number 21 and Bree Waugh. Bolton, she can't stop. No, she won't stop. She picks up goal number two of the game. AL leads 2-0 at the break. Senior takes 12 shots in the game. Second half, Bolton. A quick pass up to striker Kelsey Cheney. A beautiful shot will give another one to AL. And an even better spin move afterwards. The Lynx shut out the Trojans in this one, folks. Four to nothing. Obviously, it's really nice. I mean, to play in front of our home fans and be able to control the game and win four to nothing is, is nice. It was very good. We had a great team effort, and we shared the ball, and everyone played really well. We did really well. We um, started out pretty rough, so um, but once it, we got in our rhythm, we got it going, and we played really well together. We played it last year, too, and I think we took, like, 30-some shots before we even got a goal in, and so, I mean, we, we know she's good, so, um, and she seems to rise to the occasion when she plays us. The Lynx have outscored their opponents so far this season 10-2. to For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Logan Corkin. Thanks, Logan. How about that? AL is 3-0. The Lynx have 11 days off. Abraham Lincoln does not play again until April 22nd. Thomas Jefferson just getting started. Samantha Arnold and the gang, preseason number 14, dropped their first match, shut out at SC East. Seventh ranked Lewis Central 2-0. The Titans pitch a couple of shutouts and score 22 goals. Same deal for the Saints. St. Albert, two shutouts. The Saints score 18 goals. So the girls' high school soccer season alive and kicking. Now to football of another sort. Did you hear about the AL football coach? He's headed across town. Justin Camrat has resigned. The now former Lynx head coach has accepted a new gig in the Lewis Central School District. Now Camrat, who guided Abraham Lincoln to a 33 and 27 record in six years at the helm, will become the Titans strength and conditioning coach. The 32 year old and his family live in the LC district, so it just makes sense. As for the Lynx, the search for the new head football coach at Abraham Lincoln is underway and we'll keep you posted. And now, it's time for our play of the week, brought to you by Buena Vista University. The Abraham Lincoln girls soccer team is off to a 3-0 start, thanks in part to number 21, Delaney Bolton. The senior here, two goals and an assist in the Lynx 4-0 win over Atlantic. AL's Delaney Bolton with our play of the week. The play of the week is brought to you by Buena Vista University. Earn your bachelor's with face-to-face -face classes right here in Council Bluffs. It just keeps getting crazier and crazier. But then again, we wouldn't have it any other way here on the BSZ. Now, you think this week was something? Wait a next week. <laughs> and so, for this latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm J.J. Davis, and as always, I'll see you around. <laughs>